So let us move to discussing buprenorphine treatment more specifically. I'd like to review the mechanism of action of buprenorphine in the treatment of opioid disorders, the therapeutic implications of partial agonism and high affinity for immune receptors. Let me start with the buprenorphine mechanism of action and rationale for therapeutic use. In the brain, naturally produced opioids, which are called endorphins, are released in the synapse and activate the mu opioid receptors, producing a classic mu opioid response. These include things like analgesia, euphoria, constipation, and respiratory depression, as shown on the slide. When exogenous opioids, like heroin, is ingested and enters the brain, it will also activate the same receptors, producing the same results. Because full agonist, because heroin is a full mu opioid agonist, at some dose, the receptors are fully activated to, th to a theoretical 100% maximal effect. Now, there are two main issues with buprenorphine that I have already alluded to before that make it unique from other full agonist opioids. The first is that buprenorphine is a partial agonist. And it, th what that means is that it activates the mu opioid receptors in the same way, producing the same results like producing analgesia, euphoria, constipation, and respiratory depression. But it does so to a certain limit. And we call this the ceiling effect because even if you increase the dose of buprenorphine, it does not, these effects do not go above uh, our theoretical ceiling limit. For if we were to say 50%, no matter how much buprenorphine we provide, the level of analgesia or euphoria or respiratory depression will not go above these limits. Antagonists, on the other hand, actually attach to the receptors but never actually activate the receptor. Therefore, antagonists, unlike both partial or full agonists, never activate the receptors. The ceiling effect of buprenorphine means that there's a limit on the respiratory depression, as I alluded to earlier, and is one of the reasons why this medication can be safely prescribed. Also, what this also means is that taking more buprenorphine does not lead to additional euphoric effects. This is very different from other uh, full agonist opioids like oxycodone or heroin or morphine, where taking additional doses generally means you get additional euphoria. And this is exactly why patients can be trusted to take one or two tablets a day and refrain from taking additional tablets. For patients who are addicted to opioids, by definition, they are unable to control their opioid intake. However, for buprenorphine, because of its partial agonism, they actually are able to limit their intake to what is recommended and prescribed. The second issue about buprenorphine that has to be understood is that it has a very high affinity for the opioid receptor, which means that it binds very tightly to the receptors. If buprenorphine is attached to the, to the receptor, other full agonists are typically used, such as heroin, oxycodone, morphine, will not displace buprenorphine. This is a critical benefit to patients because while the patient is taking buprenorphine, even if they used heroin, they will not experience any euphoria. This is what I was talking about earlier, that both buprenorphine and methadone can block the euphoric effects of other substances or block the positive reinforcement. Now, when you combine these two concepts of buprenorphine, that A, it is a partial agonist, and B, it is, has a high affinity at the opioid receptors, these two issues, which is actually what happens with a partial agonist typically, is that there's now possibility for precipitated withdrawal. Now, during buprenorphine treatment, this is the one most concerning adverse event that has to be avoided at all costs. Now, on the other hand, if heroin is already on the receptor, and then buprenorphine is introduced. Because buprenorphine has a high affinity for the receptor, buprenorphine will displace the heroin. Now, once this happens, this displacement will cause a sudden drop in the receptor activation, going from a full activation to partial activation. This sudden drop in activation is experienced as withdrawal. This means that the introduction of buprenorphine, while heroin or other opioids are already on the receptors, will cause an antagonist effect. In order to avoid this reaction, the heroin must first be sufficiently displaced from the receptors. The way we gauge this is by using a scale called a, the Clinical Opioid Withdrawal Scale, or COWS scale. If the COWS score is 8 or greater, generally we think that the patient is sufficiently ready for the introduction of buprenorphine, meaning sufficient amounts of heroin or other opioids have dissipated from the receptors, such that introduction of buprenorphine will not cause 
antagonist effects or withdrawal effects. Instead, what happens is an increase in receptor activation, which is experienced as agonist effects. Therefore, it is very critical for patients starting on buprenorphine to first be in sufficient amounts of withdrawal from the heroin or morphine or oxycodone before buprenorphine is introduced. If you do not, then the introduction of buprenorphine will cause even worse withdrawal. 